So if you are watching this tutorial video, hopefully you watch the metamorphosis video to kind of get an understanding of visual of what a function is. Um, but basically, if you didn't watch that, um, think about a machine. So there's something that goes into a machine, something happens in the machine, and something comes out. So what goes in, we call the input, and what comes out of the machine, we call the output. Okay, so basically in math, actually relating this to a function as a mathematical term, for every input, there can only be one output. Okay, so if we look at these graphs, excuse me, these tables, x represents input. So that means for every x value, there can only be one output. So every time there is a zero, I better be getting out a zero. So when the input is zero x, the output is zero. Okay, so let's go back up to our machines first. So there are three different names for input and three different names for output. So input we can call the x value. So when we are looking at functions, we're identifying them, um, most of the time I would say they are given in an XY table or graph, okay? Another name is called the domain, and the domain is actually the set of all inputs. And then the last one is independent variable. Okay. And there are also three names for outputs. So if the x value is the input, the y value is going to be the output. The domain was the set of all inputs. The range is the set of all outputs. And if input is independent, output is going to be dependent. Okay. And one thing I like to point out here, a former student actually pointed this out to me, is that all the inputs, except for x value, you're on your own with that one. Input starts with i in, it's going in domain has an i in, and independent variable has an i in. So it kind of can help you remember um, your labels and not get them confused with each, with each other if you think of that little trick. Okay, so before we go any further, um, let's talk about what a function is. So a function is a relationship with one or more variables where each input, so what we're putting in the machine, can only have one output. So every time I put a four into the machine, I better get the same output, okay? And then we're gonna be real repetitive. It says each input is only allowed to correspond, that means go with, one output. Okay, so I had another teacher that um, taught my kids one year and she made a really funny saying about the way this goes, but um, think about your real life and think about um, dating, which you're too young to do in eighth grade, but bear with me for this example. Um, but basically this example is to have a functional relationship. Do not repeat your exes, okay? In real life, to have a functional relationship, do not repeat your exes. So that usually always gets a giggle out of everyone, but what does that mean and why am I telling it to you? So let's relate it to math. To have a function, so for something to be a function, the x value cannot be repeated, OK? 
Okay, so let's look at these two examples. It says this first one is a function because none of the x values have more than one different y value. Okay, so none of these x values are repeated. Therefore, it's a function. Okay, but look at this second one. Every input can only have one output, but the easy kind of trick way to remember is do not repeat your x's. And here's my x value, and it's being repeated. Uh-oh. So the first time I put in a negative 3, I got out a 1. The second time I put in a negative 3, I got out a negative 1. That's not good. They should have had the same output. Each input, so the input of negative 3, should only have one output to be a function. So then this one would be not a function. Okay, so let's do some examples on the back. So let's look at A. So A is another table. So look at your X values. This is your input. X represents input, okay? None of them are repeating, so A must be a function. That means every input has only one output. But what about B? I see an input of three twice. The input of three has two different outputs. That means it's not a function. And if I had you explain, you would say the input of three has two different outputs. Okay, let's look at letter C. So we have some ordered pairs. We need to look at the x values to see if any of them are being repeated. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight my x values to make it a little easier for me. And for C, none of them are being repeated, so it's a function. For D, the one is being repeated that's a problem. So for the input of one, I had an output of eight and an output of negative three. To be a function, every input can only have one output, but the input of one has two outputs. So that means it's not a function. Okay, I'm gonna skip the graph for a second. And look at this one. This one's a little bit different. This is called a mapping diagram. And you wanna look at your X values, but don't just look to see if they're repeated. You have to see how many different outputs or Y values it's pointing to. So negative four is only pointing to one, negative two is only pointing to one. Same thing with negative one and four. So that means this is a function. Okay, let's look at this one. So I see a problem here. The input of three, it's pointing to an output of four and to 16. So to be a function, it can only have one output. This one has two, so it's not a function. Okay, so let's do the mapping diagram, okay? Excuse me, not mapping diagram, graph. I was grabbing a paper clip, that's why it was taking me longer. So when you do a graph, you are gonna use what is called the vertical line test to determine if it's a function. So I'm going to take a vertical line, so I'm bending my paper clip, and I'm gonna go across the graph. If at any point it touches more than once, it fails and is not a function. So let me highlight my graph here. And my purple paper clip never touches more than one part at a time. So that passes and is a function. 
But let's look at F. Almost immediately, it's touching here and here. Same thing over here. I'm just doing it a little further to the side so you can see. So that means for this x value, it has a y value up here and down there. So that means for this input, there are two different outputs. <coughs> that means it fails and is not a function. Okay, and then last thing. So function notation. It says when dealing with functions, you will see this in place of y. So sometimes you'll see this in place of the letter y. We know y is output. So the way to say that is f of x. Okay. And let's see what we do with that. So it says to evaluate a function for a particular x value, just plug it in and then simplify. So it gives us the equation if f of x, which we know is the same thing as y, if f of x equals 2x plus 1, find f of 3. So what that means is everywhere in this equation that I see an x, I'm now going to plug in a 3. So 2, instead of x, I'm going to put a 3 plus 1. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. We will do more with that later on. Okay. And if you would like to completely fill in your notes and from everything we covered in class, Go ahead and pause the video and then you can fill in this information.